Kingsman The Golden Circle is directed by Matthew Vaughan and is a sequel to the surprise hit of 2015 which was Kingsman The Secret Service. Now if you've been following my channel for long enough you will know that Kingsman The Secret Service was one of the very first reviews I ever did on this channel and I enjoyed that movie so much that it ended up becoming one of my favourite movies of that year and it got onto my best of the year list for 2015 which is why I was incredibly excited for Kingsman the Golden Circle and does this movie live up to the first one? <sighs> Kinda but not really. Now I want to start off this review by emphasizing that I don't think this is a bad movie it's far from it. It's just compared to the first movie this is a massive, massive letdown in my opinion. There were loads of things in this movie that really should have worked, but they just didn't. Now before I get into the negatives, I do have some positives to say about the movie, and the first of them is the fight scenes. The Every action scene in this movie is incredibly well handled. They do use a lot of the effects from the first movie, whereby it's a lot of, you know, quick zooms and going back and forth, which is kind of to give this illusion of done in one take. And sometimes it doesn't work, but for the most part the action scenes in this movie are really, really well handled. Even though they're not as memorable as the ones in the first movie, they are still pretty damn entertaining to watch, especially the opening chase scene, which is probably my favourite in the entire movie. As soon as that was finished, the rest of the movie kind of was a bit meh, but that opening action scene was amazing. Mainly because I'm being biased, because it's set to one of my favourite Prince songs ever. But still, that opening chase scene set the bar to an incredibly high standard. Unfortunately, what followed was kind of lacklustre. I thought the acting in this movie was pretty good. Taron Egerton was really good yet again as Eggsy. Unfortunately though, because his character arc was pretty much finished in the first movie, seeing that he came from a chav to a gentleman spy by the end of the first one, there isn't really much else he can do in this movie. I mean, at the start of the movie, he's a gentleman spy, and that's pretty much it for the rest of the movie. They couldn't really do much else with his character, but for what they could do in that limited, you know, confined space, I thought they did a pretty good job, and I thought Taron Egerton did as good a job as possible with the character. Julianne Moore, I thought, was pretty good as Poppy, the main villain of the movie. I don't think she's as good as Samuel L. Jackson's character, but that being said, there is a certain aura to her that I did find quite fascinating. She seems sweet and charming on first glance, but you can tell there's something not quite right. And then a couple of seconds later, she, it just goes to show that she is batshit crazy. And I just love that about her character. She's not a straightforward villain, she's a bit of a psychopath when she wants to be. And I did find that really intriguing with her character. That being said though, she was a little bit useless, because Samuel L. Jackson's character in the first movie actually went out there and did some of the horrible shit himself. But Julianne Moore's character just sits back, pushes some buttons, and lets everyone else do her dirty work for her. Which kind of makes her a pretty boring villain when you really think about it. However, my favourite performances in the entire movie easily go to Mark Strong as Merlin and Pedro Pascal as Agent Whiskey. These two guys made the film way much better than it should have been. Mark Strong as Merlin unfortunately didn't get that much screen time in the first one and for the sake of his character he couldn't really do much. But in this one, he gets to do a lot more and he really makes the most of his role. I've always thought he was a really good actor, but here he really does make every moment count. And Pedro Pascal as Agent Whiskey was just a ton of fun to watch. He absolutely encapsulates that character and makes him feel like an actual person. D despite the fact he has a lightsaber lasso, but yeah, he does feel like a legit person, and I thought his performance was absolutely amazing. 
Also, I really like the introduction of the statesmen and how you can just keep comparing them to the Kingsmen. I thought that whole aspect was quite interesting and some of the stuff they did with the statesmen I thought was pretty cool. You didn't see much of them, but for what it's worth, what they did was pretty interesting. Unfortunately though, that is where my positives end. This movie does have quite a few flaws that stop it from being better than the original. And the first of those flaws that I'm going to talk about is a certain cameo by a Sir Elton John. Now, when he's first in the movie, it's quite funny. The concept of seeing Elton John swearing his head off is funny in itself. But then he's in another scene, and then another scene, and by the end of the movie, he's actually in quite a lot of it. And it just kind of bugged me, because like I said, when you first see him, the joke is funny. But the more you see of him, the more bored you get of him. Well, I, especially I got bored of him. And even though he does kind of play a part in the finale of the movie, so to speak, overall I just didn't really see the point of him being in the movie. It was funny at first, but it just outstayed its welcome. Also, on a similar note to Elton John, there was a specific scene in the movie, if you've seen it, you'll know which one I'm on about, that was intended to be one long-running joke. But I just found it all awkward. They, It's kind of in the middle of the movie, I'll, I'll just say that. Um, and... It lasts for way too long. The whole... It's just like this elongated joke that just lasts for longer than it should have. I didn't find it at all funny, not even once. And they do certain things in it that, honestly, I was questioning the whole time. Like, there is one shot in particular, and again, if you've seen the movie, you know exactly which one I'm on about. As it happened, I literally said aloud, I don't need to see this, why am I seeing this? Also, even though I said the performances were good in this movie, the characters are not exactly handled and balanced very equally. For example, there are certain characters that are introduced and are very interesting, but they're barely in the movie, despite being one of the main characters on the poster. And it's a shame, because I really wanted to see more of them but they're barely in the movie. On the other hand though, we have certain characters returning from the first movie. And I am of course talking about Colin Firth's character. Now, spoiler alert if you haven't seen the first movie, but his character gets shot in the face and dies. And it's because of that, it kind of made that moment in the first movie, a very significant turning point, not just for the story, but for Eggsy's character. And it was a very poignant and actually quite emotional moment in the first movie. But bringing him back here defeats that entire purpose. Also, very quickly, my final two problems with the movie are that, one, there is a lot of questionable CGI in the movie, especially in places that don't even really require CGI. But it's just there anyway, and a lot of it is very obvious. Uh, that was something that kind of annoyed me throughout the whole thing. And my other problem is in regards to the amount of swearing in the movie. It just felt like someone had dared Jane Goldman, the main writer of the movie, to see how many times they could get away with using the word fuck. Now, in the first movie, there is quite a bit of swearing, but it's used at certain points. It's used when characters need to swear. It's used in a natural way. But in this movie, they use it every five fucking seconds. <laughs> like, there is a moment, I'm, I'm, if I remember rightly, there is a moment where Eggsy says, for fuck's sake, and then not even a second later, he says, you've got to be fucking kidding. There's not even any breathing room between those two uses of the F word, it's just like rapid fire fuck. And it just doesn't make any sense, and it really did kind of grate on me after a while. I, I presume a lot of people don't really care about this, but for me, 
it just kind of grated after a while. Anyway, I'm going to give Kingsman the Golden Circle a 7 out of 10. Like I said, it's not an awful movie, it's just incredibly disappointing. It did have some enjoyable moments, but there's an emphasis on some. For every enjoyable moment in this movie, there were easily two scenes that easily let it down. So guys, that was my review of Kingsman The Golden Circle. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bye.